Greetings and warm welcome to our channel. Uh, as you all know, we have embarked on an exciting series that revolves around analyzing Twitter data using the incredible Envivo. This series comprises several videos that cover everything you need to know. If you haven't watched the first video yet, simply click on the link that appears at the top right corner of your screen to this direction. In that video, I explained how to download and activate a trial license for Envivo which is the most cited software in qualitative research. Moving on to the next video, I demonstrated the use of NCAPTCHA, a handy feature that comes bundled with NVivo. I mean if you download and install NVivo in your computer, the add-in named NCAPTCHA will automatically be added into your Chrome browser. That Chrome extension NCAPTCHA allows you to capture Twitter data as datasets. I also highlighted the advantages of downloading Twitter data as datasets instead of saving web pages as PDFs or taking screenshots. You can find the link to that video in the same spot on your screen. By the way, no worries if you haven't had a chance to watch them yet. You won't miss out on any valuable information. You can always catch up later and still gain the same amount of knowledge from this video. Before dive into the core content of this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Uh, by doing so, you will stay updated on the upcoming videos in this series as well as the other engaging content we upload daily. In this particular video, we will explore how to view datasets within NMVivo and apply different filters to clean them up. For instance, you might only want to analyze tweets from a specific time period, focus on tweets with a certain number of retweets, or Consider only Twitter accounts with a minimum number of followers to exclude bots and irrelevant sources. In our last video of this series, we reached a significant milestone. We successfully imported four datasets into NVivo, all of which were downloaded from Twitter using the remarkable end capture feature. Let's take a closer look at these datasets. Firstly, we had the profile data of a prominent individual, none other than Babar Azam the esteemed cricket captain of Pakistan. Uh, this dataset provides us with valuable insights into Babar Azam's Twitter profile, tweets, retweets, etc, etc. And this is the dataset of that individual. And secondly, we had a dataset related to a specific search query we conducted on Twitter. Remember environment issue and we got some results. It includes the tweets we received as a response to that query, right? Moving on, we had two datasets that revolve around hashtags. The first one focused on hashtag Pakistan Super League. The fourth and the final dataset in which we captured the essence of me to hashtag. This dataset presents us with a vast pool of data to dive into and uncover various perspectives and trends related to the me to campaign. So these were the four hashtags that we imported at the last of our previous video on the same series. Now as we venture deeper into our exploration, let's dive into the captivating world within each dataset. Uh, by double clicking on any dataset, we unlock a detailed view that unveils the hidden treasures contained within. Uh, inside this view, we encounter an array of columns that provide us with valuable information about the data. For example, ID. This unique identifier helps us distinguish and organize each individual entry within the dataset. Tweet ID. This tweet ID serves as a distinctive identifier for each tweet. And then username, which reveals the usernames of individuals who authored the tweets, allowing us to identify the different voices contributing to the conversation. In this example, this is the Twitter dataset of a single individual. But if we talk about hashtag, there will be so many usernames here. Tweet content, the crown jewel of the dataset. Uh, this column presents the actual text content of each tweet. And then this time column. This time will document the date when each date was posted. You know, enabling us to analyze temporal trends and understand the context in which conversations unfolded. And then tweet type, whether a particular entry represents an original tweet or a retweet. For example, you will see some retweets as well in the dataset. Look at here. 
and that's just the tip of the iceberg there are numerous other columns in each data set each offering its own unique perspective and potential for exploration um, i must say that keen eyed viewers may have noticed certain columns adorned with the symbol of an half hour glass or sand glass icon for example this column has an half hour glass or half sand glass icon username has similarly time tweet type retweeted by number of retweets hashtags etc etc have uh, that specific icon in front of their name these icons hold the key to our filtering capabilities um, allowing us to refine our data sets by eliminating unwanted entries let's begin our filtering journey by focusing on some of them for example this time column holds a crucial role in our analysis uh, as it allows us to explore temporal trends and gain insights into the chronological aspects of the twitter conversations we are examining let's say or we want to have data within a specific duration of time if you look at the data there are some tweets that were posted in 2023 then 2022 let's say i want to get the data of 2022 only only those tweets which were tweeted or retweeted in 2022 only we can apply filter to meet our needs for that follow these steps look at the time column in the detailed view of your data set look for an half hour glass or half sand glass icon icon at the top of the time column indicating filter options as i told you hit at it we can set starting date and ending date here. We should ensure that the date format we enter should match the format in the actual time column of our data set. For example, the date format being used in the time column is month, day and year. We should match the date format here as well. So we can use greater than or greater than or equal to and can enter the desired starting date. For example, I use greater than or equal to enter January 1st, 2022. So we want to get the tweets of 2022 only, right? And use less than or equal to uh, in the second box and enter the desired ending date. For example, December. 12 2022 so i have given a specific date and it's done and now if i hit ok all tweets or retweets that barbarism posted in 2023 later will be eliminated and only tweets that were posted in 2022 will be shown so this is how we apply time filter let's try this on another column uh, as i mentioned in the previous video uh, when we were downloading Twitter data as data set from an individual's account, we had two options including retweets or tweets only, right? And I told you that if you opted for the option of including retweets at that stage, we can still refine our data set using the filtering feature. So to apply this filter, but first let's take a look at this column. Tweet, if you scroll down, there are some retweets as well because we opted including retweets at the dataset download stage in the filtering menu uh, you have two options hide or show choose the option that best suits your filtering needs uh, let's say if you select hide enter the word retweets here remember i told you that it must match what has been written in the actual column entries so i am going to write tree tweets what does that mean by hitting ok it will hide all the columns that contain retweet by the way we must match here not retweets but retweet only so retweet so all the columns that contain this entry will be hidden so if i hit ok you will see that retweets are gone there will be no retweet entry in this column and in the whole data set as well let's try the second option if you choose show now if i write tweet because there is tweet written here tweet and hit ok now let's see retweets are still there because i deliberately made a mistake if you hit it again 
शो कंटेन्स इंट्री बट रीट्वीट हैज ट्वीट वर्ड एज वेल आर इज एक्स्ट्रा बट ट्वीट इज देयर इन द कॉलम सो आई मस्ट सिलेक्ट इक्वल टू एंड इफ नाउ आई क्लिक एट ओके now the retweet entries will be eliminated so we should take extra care while applying different filters we can do the same on retweeted by number of retweets hashtags name all those columns that have this half hour glass or half sand glass icon in front of their name so now we have covered how to apply different filters on different columns you can clear the filters by simply hitting at this icon again and hit at clear filter and the filter is cleared similarly on tweet type repeat the same so all filters that we applied are cleared now you might notice that within each data set you will find five different options to explore and analyze your twitter data by the way these options are part of data analysis but let's talk briefly about them table at uh, this option presents each tweet entry in a row view like this one and this one and this one you can do this way as well so it provides a comprehensive view of the data set allowing you to scroll through and examine individual tweets while having an eye on other tweets as well but if you hit at form it will display all the details of each tweet in a column view you can say uh, this view provides a structural layout where you can easily view and analyze specific attributes of the tweets such as tweet id username content time and more and the chart option this chart option allows us to visualize the distribution of tweets over time for example if you apply a time filter to focus on a specific period the chart might display the number of tweets in different months but now we are talking about overall data set it converted into different time intervals for example you can see and observe how many times a person like babar azam uh, tweeted between july and september 2027 by by looking at this line Additionally the chart can reveal trends over time such as increased posting activity in certain months or years for example look at the trend from july to september 2029 to onwards and you can compare it with the previous months so this is how you can have an idea of a trend in your data set cluster analysis Uh, this option is part of the data analysis stage and while it is not suitable to delve into it in detail at this moment cluster analysis plays a significant role in understanding patterns and relationship within our data set uh it, it involves grouping similar tweets based on various factors and requires more time to fully comprehend it so i am not going to talk about this in detail for now but i will explain it in detail when we touch the analysis part this map option now this map option provides a dynamic visualization of the geographical distribution of tweets while it may not always yield significant insights it becomes particularly useful when analyzing hashtag data sets for example the map displays the locations from where people are tweeting about a specific hashtag it may or may not look good when we talk about an individual's profile for example one may have tweeted all his or her tweets while being at the same location in case of babar azam if we look at this entry he tweeted 11 times while he was in pittsburgh usa and 10 times while he was in dubai so it offers a visual representation of tweet origins contributing to a deeper understanding of the spatial context of the conversation so going back to table so i have shared all significant information with you while seeing the twitter data set in detail view now let's talk about a hashtag data before that if you open the search query data you can see the same things here as well you can apply different filters 
fast forwarding to hashtag data let's take into consideration the me too campaign if you double click it it will be open in detail view you see there are 16981 tweets near to 17000 tweets well, by applying the filter on number of followers column uh, we can remove accounts that are likely to be bots or accounts with a low followers count. This filtering step might help us refine our data set ensuring that we focus on Twitter accounts with a substantial following, uh, which are more likely to represent genuine users and contribute to meaningful analysis. To do that, hit at this icon, select show, let it be what it is, greater than and um, uh, let's say i'm going to write 1000 and hit ok now it will eliminate all the tweets that have been tweeted from users having less than 1000 followers if we clear this filter now we can see there are some people who have less than 1000 followers but when we apply this those who have less than 1000 followers will be eliminated. So these filtering options must be applied according to the nature of your data set. If, if it is an individual's data set, apply accordingly. And if there is a hashtag data set, apply accordingly, right? Now, if I go to chart, you can see number of tweets tweeted by different usernames on bar graph. For example, this username tweeted for 1750 times about hashtag dataset. And now if we go to map, you will see a colorful word map now. There are so many entries. We can zoom in. The map option in any way becomes particularly significant when analyzing hashtag data I told you earlier. Uh, it allows us to visualize the geographical popularity and distribution of a specific hashtag, right? Uh, by examining the locations from where people are tweeting using the hashtag, we can gain insights into the regional or global impact of the hashtag and identify areas where it is generating significant engagement. Let's consider the example of two entries. If we observe that there are 12 tweets from Minnesota, USA, and 80 tweets are from Madhya Pradesh, India. It could indicate a higher level of activity and interest related to this hashtag movement in, in the specific area of India. This observation prompts us to explore further such as by following news updates or consulting various sources to confirm and deepen our understanding of the local context and any other events or discussions. The map option empowers the researchers to utilize analysis and explore patterns and trends related to individual accounts or hashtags across different locations. It opens up avenues for further investigation. I must say that each researcher can leverage the map option in their own unique way, depending on their research focus and objectives. By the way, you can export map as image file as well as well as the chart as image file as well. Also, after importing the data into NVivo, you can export any data set in different forms. For example, if you, if you hit at export, you can export data set into different reference management softwares. You can export it in Excel file as well. Look at the extension. So the file that we downloaded as dataset using nCapture, the extension was nvcx, right? But after importing into nvivo, we can export those datasets as Excel files as well. We can do that after applying different filters on that to customize the dataset in our own way. Now, please download different datasets according to your own choice and repeat what I have discussed in this video. So you could follow me better in our upcoming videos on the same series on how to analyze Twitter data using NVivo. If you like this video, hit like and share with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed this channel yet, go and subscribe to get the daily dose of our videos. I will be coming very soon with the next video on the same series. Thank you very much for watching this.